this is an artist rendition of the Phoenix Lander landed on the northern polar plains of Mars. And uh, as you can see, um, and as Peter has told you, we're there to study the air, the dirt, and the ice in this northern polar region. And we have a very comprehensive set of tools that we're going to study this region with. In fact, we have the seven total experiments that are labeled here on the graphic. Um, but some of these experiments are as complicated and as comprehensive as a Swiss Army knife. So um, we, in total, we have 15 different unique components or tools to study the Martian region. Um, let's see. Let's talk about the first one, which is the robotic arm, shown here digging uh, or scooping up dirt in preparing to deliver that uh, dirt or soil to the two analyzer instruments, which are on the right. Um, and this, this experiment, or the two analyzer experiments, are going to be talked about in further detail by Dr. Boynton and Dr. Hecht in a few moments. So if we can go to the next graphic, please. Um, this is a zoomed-in version of the scoop in gray, shown on the bottom. And you can see that the scoop also has a couple of its own tools. It has two scraping blades. That will help us break up clods of dirt that might be on the surface. And it also has a rasp tool in near the back of the scoop. This rasp is like a small drill or dremel tool. And it digs into the hard, icy material that we expect to find there. This icy material is expected to be as hard as concrete on the surface of Mars because of the very cold Martian temperatures. So we need this kind of tool in order to access that ice. And shown above here is the thermal and electrical conductivity probe, which is part of the MECA experiment. And that will be talked about uh, by Michael Hecht in a few moments. So if we can go back then to the previous graphic. OK. Um, the robotic arm camera is shown then just above the robotic arm scoop there. And this camera allows us to view the digging area in greater detail and also inside the trench where the scoop has been digging. And then also it, we can see the sample within the scoop just prior to delivery to one of the two analyzer experiments. Um, going, counter, or going clockwise then is the Mars descent imager, which is underneath the spacecraft and not shown here. And that imager will allow us to take uh, an image prior to landing that will give us the bird's eye view of the landing site. And this uh, view will be very important in helping us understand how the terrain where the Phoenix will land has formed. OK, the following instrument then is the surface stereoscopic imager. And this imager uh, will allow us to see, after we've landed, the full 360 degrees around the lander in full color. It will also be able to monitor the digging operations. And also, it starts our atmospheric set of experiments. Because it can look up into the atmosphere, and it can sense water ice clouds, dust clouds, and it can also tell us how much water vapor is in the atmosphere. Um, and then following that uh, is the meteorology station. And this meteorology station is one of our Swiss Army knife instruments. It has multiple components. Um, shown here are two of the components. The, on the left is the uh, upward-looking LIDAR. You saw that in the video, um, firing the green laser up into the atmosphere. So this experiment um, will be able to tell us not only the, that water ice clouds and dust clouds are there, but how high they are above the lander, um, up to probably about 12 and a half miles above the lander. Um, the MET mast that's shown on the right um, contains three temperature sensors up on the mast to measure the local air temperature. Um, and not shown here is actually the, uh, a pressure sensor as well that's at the base of the mast. And the pressure sensor will allow us to sense if a storm is approaching, uh, the lander site, or also if a dust devil passes over the lander. Um, and then, not shown, but at the very top of the mast, and I have a little model here, is a wind telltale. So this will allow us to measure the wind speed and direction. You can see here the sea structure, which uh, is mounted to the top of the mast, um, a mirror on the bottom that can be viewed by the uh, surface stereoscopic imager, and this here is the telltale itself, the string with the weight on the end of it. So as this is blowing in the wind, by by the surface stereo imager observing both the telltale itself and the mirror, the scientists can use that information to understand the wind speed and direction. I'm going to talk about uh, one of the analyzer instruments in more detail. That's the thermal and evolved gas analyzer, which we call TIGA. Its role in the Phoenix mission is to help address the habitability question. And we're going to do that by studying organic molecules and by studying water. Uh, TIGA is really a collection of two parts. Uh, one part is a group of ovens. We have eight ovens that we use to heat up the sample, and that's the thermal part. 
We have another part that acts as our nose that really sniffs the gases that are generated in the ovens as the sample is heated up, and that's the evolved gas analyzer part of the instrument. This is actually just an engineering drawing, and you can see that there's a bank of four thermal analyzers on the left and another bank of four that are similar except hidden from view on the other side. So these eight cells provide the eight ovens that we have in Tiga, and we can only analyze eight samples. That's the most we can do because these ovens can only be used once. So now, how does this work? How do we actually analyze the samples with this thing? Well, as you saw in the video which Peter showed initially, the robotic arm will dump samples onto Tiga after Tiga opens its doors, and then there's a little funnel that collects the dust and dirt and ice and directs it into one of the small uh, ovens. We actually heat the sample up to very high temperatures, about 1,000 degrees Celsius or 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a very high temperature beyond the experience of most people, but it's actually hot enough that many common um, metals, such as aluminum, for example, can actually uh, be melted. Um, here's actually a, a example of one of the ovens that we're going to be using. It's very small, and we actually have a, a close-up of it shown on the next uh, slide. We have a quarter there for scale, and you can see that really is small, and we collect only a very tiny amount of sample in these uh, ovens. Now, the way this sniffing device actually works, it's a mass spectrometer, and it's actually going to measure the masses of the different molecules that are generated as we heat up the sample. What you're looking at are the four chemistry experiments that actually do take the Martian soil, mix it with water, measure all those parameters of acidity and salts. Behind it, what you can't see, I'll show you in a moment, is the microscope station, and, and you already saw the third element of MECA, the, the TECP, uh, the, uh, the thermal and electrical conductivity probe at the end of the robot arm. So if you show the next, uh, in the next slide, please, that's the microscope station. The microscope, oddly, is lying on its side, looking sideways. Now, on Earth, we typically prepare a microscope slide very carefully. If it's soil, putting some grains of soil on it, a cover slip, we can't do that very readily in Mars, so instead we rely on putting lots of soil on what passes for a microscope slide, holding it up vertically so most of it falls off. We make sure it's sticky enough by using magnets and using uh, silicone materials and looking at the material that clings, uh, that clings to, the, to the slide standing vertically. That's why this microscope on the left is lying on its side. The sample stage that moves the soil from the point where it's deposited to the point where it's viewed is sitting on the right-hand side, and right in between where you see the copper-colored band is something that while it's not an army knife, it is indeed Swiss, and that's our atomic force microscope contributed by a Swiss consortium, and that's a little device if, you, if you're old enough to remember phonograph needles. It's very much like a phonograph needle in that it traces out all the bumps, the shape of the soil particles the same way that a phonograph needle would trace the bumps and grooves in a record with resolution that is much better, much finer resolution than the, than the optical microscope itself can give, and it gives you a three-dimensional profile of those particles. And if I could see the last, uh, uh, I guess the penultimate, this is the chemistry station. That black box in the bottom, the proverbial black box, is what measures the pH and the different anions and cations I described. Now, before it can do that, you need to take soil in, and that comes in through the funnel you see in the front, the funnel with the wire bars on top that exclude large, large pebbles from the, from the sample. Uh, also, you see all those gadgets on the top, including a, a little tank that holds the water that gets added to the soil. It includes a little device to stir it up, to stir the mixture around, another little device to put little, little crucibles of chemicals in to allow us to calibrate and to allow us to do some chemical experiments like adding acid or titrating for sulfate. And on top, uh, in addition to this, of course, our heaters so that we won't be dealing with ice, but we'll be measuring water, uh, thermocouples to control, to feedback and control the temperature of the cell. 